Shannon, I assume you're going to go with the idea that Grant Hill's making a good point here. I'm glad Grant Hill said it. Because when I say things like this, everybody says, especially in the basketball community, he's just a football guy. What does he know about basketball? They don't say that. They say that, but it's okay. okay. It's, it's okay. Right, right. And we'll get, we'll get a little deeper yeah, into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, we that's, are. We, 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 very deep we'll get a little, a little deeper yeah. into that also, Skip. Okay. Grant Hill has a very unique perspective because he played in the era with Michael Jordan and saw what was said and heard what was said about Jordan. And he also played in the era in which uh, uh, LeBron played and now with the social media. And he's absolutely right. So in order to make sure LeBron James isn't Michael Jordan, every flaw, everything that he might do that's not good on the basketball court, Jordan was, supre was supreme at that. Every misstep he might say, Jordan would have never said that. Jordan would have never done that. So he's absolutely right. The vitriol that LeBron James has endured in his almost 20, now 20-year 20 career, no other athlete has had to face that. You'd have to go back to get something comparable to when Jackie Ro Robinson broke the color barrier in 1947. Skip, I think that's the only... Let's, let's but, not go that far. But, but I'm saying, but, okay. that, but Skip, right. I that's, that's I comp what LeBron James has endured. But that was, a whole different, that was a whole different era, Skip. We're talking about Jordan coming up in 84... He retired, I think he retired in what, 03, 04? Yeah. With a couple of stops and yeah. a couple of uh, yeah. uh, sabbaticals in between. I can't even call that last hitch of retirement. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. You, after the last day, that was retired. To me, it was 98. Okay. But go ahead. But what LeBron has had to endure from, a, from a, a professional athlete, everything being microscoped, everything that he does, Skip, no athlete has had to live up under the scrutiny. Not in today's time. No athlete. And it, it happened because at the age of 16, all the eyes were on this kid. When, once he did the Sports Illustrated, now, he might have chosen one tattooed on his back, but he didn't call himself that. Sports Illustrated gave him that, just like someone else gave Michael Jordan Air Jordan. Even though Jordan never called himself that, people referred to him as that. Your royal airness, Air Jordan, someone gave him that name. So in order for us to keep Jordan on the pedestal, and I'm not skipping, and, some, and what Grant is saying is, look, if I say one, he says, I believe Jordan is the GOAT. But when you do that, you also have to slight the other guy. And people have gone overboard mm -hmm. with sliding up LeBron James, and so they haven't given him the proper respect, and I don't think they have the proper appreciation. Some of the old heads do. Because you, I run into a lot of that. Skip, in the era that I played, a lot of guys feel that their era is, everybody feels their era is the best. Hell, if you, you, you grew up in the 50s, like, oh, that was the roaring 50s, the roaring 50s, and this and that. Everybody thinks 20s. <laughs> the, yeah, the okay. roaring 20s. Right. Okay. Everybody thinks that, that yeah. was the greatest. All right. But Skip, not only have LeBron James met expectations, he's exceeded them. I don't, if, if somebody were to say there's a 16 year old kid in, that was born in 84 that's an actor in Ohio, and he's going to be a four-time champion. He's going to be a four-time league MVP. He's going to be four finals MVP. And by the time it's all said and done, he might be, when you talk about all-NBA, all-star, and this and that, points scored, he might be one of the, might be the most accomplished player in, all, in NBA history. No one, this is, I tell you what, I give you odds. That's not going to happen. Not for a high school kid. And he's, me, he's met and exceeded expectations. I agree with what Grant Hill said. The vitriol, the level, let's give you, on Twitter says he's the most talked about athlete on Twitter. And it's not even close. And it's not always in a good way. You said there's millions of blind witnesses. It seems like there are two million other witnesses that is always trying to dump on him. Mm. And so I agree with Grant Hill. I'm glad Grant Hill said what a lot of people outside of the basketball community think. Mm. But they don't get the kind of respect. Grant Hill is very well respected. He's very well liked. And I think him saying what he said, I think a lot of people will, will step back and listen like, you know what? There might be some truth to this. Let me observe a little more closely over the next several months, several years, and see if what Grant Hill has said. Because I've been saying that since 2016. I'm glad Grant Hill confirmed what I thought to be true. So, to your final point about a billion blind witnesses, yeah. as I call yeah, them. Yeah, you said a blind, yeah, I said a million, you said a billion. Okay, I did say a billion. Yeah. So maybe there are two billion microscopic witnesses out there <laughs> who put LeBron under the microscope. Yes, okay. yes, yes. All right, 
I'm going to agree with one thing that Grant Hill said early in his comments on the podcast. He said, like LeBron's incredible. I give you incredible because he has been incredible. Everything's incredible. It's all time, all time. We can debate where he ranks Mount Rushmore, top 10, whatever. We're going to do a lot of top 10 here in just a few Mm -hmm. minutes. Now, for my side of the story, everyone who's ever asked me about LeBron, why do you hate LeBron? I always say the same thing. I don't hate LeBron. I honor his achievements. He, he, knock on wood, if he stays healthy, which I assume he's going to stay, he's going to be the all-time leading scorer in this league. That's, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Knock on wood one more Regular still for 40 years. Okay. But in the end, Day after day after day, I have no choice but to come out here and hear from the other side of the table that he is the GOAT. So now you have forced my hand. You have forced LeBron James into the conversation up against the greatest player by far in the history of this game. Michael Jeffrey Jordan, who went 6-0 and in the finals with six MVPs, who won, won 10 scoring titles to LeBron's one who won a defensive player of the year, not just first team all defense, defensive player of the year, something that obviously LeBron never won. Don't get me started on that. So I have no choice but to defend my guy, Michael Jordan, against your guy, LeBron James, by going to the level of what you might call nitpicking that I call boulder picking. And the more you push, the more I have to push back. It's not fair to LeBron because, to me, he doesn't even belong in the conversation with Michael Jordan, but you thrust him into it day after day after day. And by the way, not only do I blame you, but on on the, the higher order, I blame LeBron James because he started all this from the start. I give you, Sports Illustrated proclaimed him the chosen one, but then he did have it tattooed on his back, okay. so he embraced the moniker, the title, right. the the birthright of I'm the next right. chosen one, right? He opted. He chose to wear 23 coming right out of high school. And you know and I know why he chose 23. I got next. I'm here, world. <clears throat> Embrace me. I'm the next Michael Jordan. He went so far as to adopt or, should I say, steal Jordan's powder toss routine that he did before every game. Well, Jordan didn't throw it up. Jordan just put it in his hand and just clapped his hands. Okay, but but he took it and tried to take it to another level, announcing, I am here, I got next. You better be careful what you wish for because you wished upon your own head that guy. And in the end, Shannon, you know and I know that that – You are wishing hell, fire, and damnation to rain down on your head when you dare to put yourself in the same sentence with him, and you carried the torch for him onto this show in 2016, well, almost six years ago, Yep. and you have never backed off for one split second on this show. Oh, it's over. He's he's been the GOAT. He's been the GOAT? So you have forced my hand again and again to shame LeBron in the same context, the GOAT context, with Michael Jordan? I mean, to this moment, when I say it, I I seriously feel like God's going to strike us both with lightning because he does not belong. It's not fair to him. And everything that I bring up, that I'm probably about to bring up here in just a moment after you respond to me, is all in the context of defending Michael Jordan, a, a debate in which LeBron never belonged from the start. If, if you had just simply left it alone, let it be, let LeBron be LeBron and Jordan's already Jordan, just let him be, let it be, we would have no issue here. And I don't think Grant Hill would have any of these issues because all of the slander and the vitriol, it, it all is sparked. It, it all originates from the GOAT debate to me. And there are Jordan defenders, but I don't think they're old school defenders. I just think they're smart basketball people who say, what are you talking about? And the more you push, the more they push back. And and the deeper it gets into what Grant Hill is writing off as slander and vitriol, which in in the in the end, it's just the truth. But here's the thing, Skip. You said that the reason why you have to do what you have to do is because someone 
says that someone is better than Michael Jordan. That's something Michael Jordan never had to face. See, Michael Jordan never had a comparable comparison. Nobody ever tried to say, well, this guy's the GOAT, and this is what Michael Jordan is chasing. They gave him an opportunity to become Michael Jordan unfettered. But the moment LeBron James started being great, what do you do? What's the number one knock? He ain't Jordan. He ain't go 6 0. He ain't average 30. He just quits 10 scoring titles. That's what you do to knock him. Something Michael Jordan never had to endure. That's what Grant Hill, that's what I've been saying. What he's having to endure, Michael Jordan never had to go through. So, in other words, Michael Jordan, can you imagine with the social media era? With Michael Jordan going to Vegas, with going to Atlantic City and some of the off the field, some of the off the court issues, can you imagine the spotlight Jordan would be up under if he had to go through with Goat James? Come on, Skip. It's a different era. See, back then guys would keep things hush hush. People didn't try to put your business in the street. They looked at every turn. If they saw something, they turned the other way. They respected your privacy. They respected you as being great. And they never want now. Everybody is looking for that. I want to be the one to bring the house of cards down. I want to be that guy. Well, is it a house of cards? No, I'm just saying, Skip. Everybody wants you to be successful until you become successful. Everybody was a cheering for the kid. He's 16, a single mom, had him when she was 15 or 16 years of age. Everybody was applauding that. But the moment he became what they wanted him to become, now let me tear you down. Let me find, let me find something wrong with your game. Let me find something wrong in your life so I can put you in a place because I think you got too high. The guy's a billionaire. I, I, I didn't even bring that up. All the things that the man has so, done. So is Jordan, but go ahead. He didn't do it while he was playing. No, he did not. This is what, and that's what I'm saying. Skip, look, and, and that has nothing to do with this. I don't think him having a billion dollars being worth a billion has anything to do with the vitriol. I think it has to do with this. No player has ever received the criticism. Kobe didn't get the criticism. Kobe did everything like Michael. He chewed gum. He walked like him. He put the sleeve on his. He put the little the, uh, wristband up on his sleeve. He had the th uh, 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 the, the, the uh, uh, thing on his calf. He walked like Jordan. He every you talk about the power toss. Name a mannerism that Michael Jordan didn't do that Kobe didn't do. And Kobe never received he, the vitriol. He actually tried to be Michael. He tried to be. And Kobe never got mm -hmm. the vitriol Michael Jordan or uh, uh, LeBron did. No player, Skip. No professional athlete. Has, has had to endure more in, in, in the scrutiny, the scorn, than what, my, than what LeBron James had to do. You, because I, I get it. Michael came along. Michael got to be Michael Jordan. There was no comparison. Nobody tried to compare him to this, where he did this. They didn't say, well, yeah, Michael Jordan did that, but he ain't magic. Well, he did it, but he ain't Larry. And this notion for you, he went 6-0. He dominated his era. Michael Jordan's era did not start in the 90s, ladies and gentlemen. It started in 1984, and he didn't win jack mm. in the 80s. So, so we, we just make it seem like Michael Jordan had a 10-year career. He went 6-0. He went six finals. I mean, he won six titles in eight years. So what are we going to do about 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90? Did he not play in that era? How about after game one in Boston, Larry Bird, that you grew up idolizing yes. your favorite player, said, we just watched God disguised as Michael yes. Jordan. That was his second year in the league, yes. right? Mm -hmm. that's, what the, that's what the great rival players, the established stars, yes. thought of him after one year in the league. Yeah. No, nobody is saying that Michael wasn't great. I'm saying, I'm not saying that I saw the lion's share of his game, but what I am saying, what I push back on, is that Michael Jordan's career didn't start in the 80s, and nobody won titles when Michael Jordan was played. Sure they did. Magic and, Magic and Larry won a bunch of them. Mm. They won a bunch of titles. Isaiah won a bunch of titles when Michael Jordan was playing. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Larry won two, and Magic won three. Isaiah won two. So teams with some players won titles when he was playing. So okay. this notion that he, he drowned them out, that's not true. Okay, it took him a while. But the bad boy Pistons were one of the greatest teams in NBA history. Mm -hmm. And he did get swept by the Boston Celtics. But that Celtics Twice. team, but look, those I'm talking about that group, mm -hmm. they were ten times better than the ones that we just saw vanquished by Steph and company. Ten times better. 
They were so yeah. loaded. You can make a case they're top three all time. You can make a case they are by far the best Celtics team ever because yeah. they were. Yeah. They oh, yeah. The 86, the 86 team is, is a top three team. There's no question about it. They got three top 75 players. I believe they should have had four with Dennis Johnson. You know what Dennis Johnson was before he even got to Boston. And you knew exactly what he was once he got to Boston. So I'm not, Skip, I'm not arguing that. But you see what you're saying? You said those teams were historically great. But you look down on LeBron for getting swept by the uh, Spurs. Was that a shame? Was that Spurs, that team? You do know they got Parker. They got Ginobili. They had uh, Tim Duncan, who we're going to talk about as a top 10 player. He is on my list. Mm -hmm. So, and you look down at LeBron, he got swept. KD, top 75. Steph Curry, top 75. Uh, Clay Thompson is going to be a Hall of Famer. Draymond's going to be a Hall of Famer. They got a coach that's a Hall of Famer. See, when Michael Jordan got swept, everybody said those teams were so much better than Jordan's. LeBron James gets swept. Michael Jordan would have never got swept. Really? Never said that, but you never heard Tim Duncan or Parker or Ginobili say, we just played God disguised as LeBron James. Do, Nobody ever said that. Do you hear what Tim Duncan said? Tim Duncan said, this is about to be your league, kid. I, I'm glad you gave us but this it one. it wasn't then. <laughs> Skip, the guy was 22. You remember what happened to Jordan when he was 22? He got swept, but he got swept in the first round. LeBron James gets swept in the finals. You cast it, you, you criticized him. Michael Jordan got swept in the first round twice. Mm. And everybody applauded him because they say he was God in sneakers. I, I'm confused. Okay. Since losing in the first round, people would rather lose in the first round than lose in the finals right. because it's a blemish on your resume. Let me throw some more vitriol and slander at you. And let's let's ask the question, is this vitriol, slander, or just pure fact? What happened in 2010 against the Boston Celtics of Paul Pierce and Ray Allen yeah. and Kevin Garnett? What happened when LeBron was up two games to one and in three, I'm sorry, four, five, and six? It was another meltdown by LeBron. It was actually the first one to the point that his owner, Dan Gilbert, then accused him publicly of quitting. Yeah. And insiders on it, from his inner circle said that LeBron had to be sedated before those games because of an internal issue on the team. And I'm like, sedated? Are you kidding me? This never happened to Michael That's Jordan. That's not true. Michael Jordan in the 1990 Eastern Conference Finals had a two-game lead, 2-1 two lead on the uh, Detroit Pistons. Go look it up. And they won three and straight. Go look at his numbers. No, and no, 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 no. LeBron's so, numbers. So it's not about wait, numbers wait, now. wait. Did Jerry Reinsdorf accuse Michael Jordan of quitting in there? No, 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 no. An owner accused LeBron James of quitting. Is that vitriol? No. Is, is that but see what you did. That's not what you said. You said LeBron James had a 2-1 lead against three top 75 players. Ray Allen, Kevin, Kevin Garnett, and Paul Pierce are all top 75 players. Am I correct? Okay, LeBron James, he lost to them 4-2. You criticized him. Michael Jordan had a 2-1 lead on Bad Boy Pistons. They won three, three straight, beat him 4-2. Did, you praise did Michael Jordan. From inside, say Jordan had to be sedated. That's that's to defend his numbers in those three games. No. At the end of the day, it's all about winning and losing. Okay. Now you can dress it up however right. you want to. Let's try. I'm going to ask you to dress up 2011 for me because they're up two games to one at Dallas, and help me out. Four, five, and six. LeBron suffered the all-time superstar meltdown I have ever witnessed. Jordan never had anything like this against a Dallas team. It had one top 75, but yeah. only one, right? Yes, Unless yes. It was Jason Kidd on it? Yes, he was. Okay, Jason Kidd, two. top 75, okay, had two top 75. He was players. at the end of his run. Correct. But I'll give you that. But in those last three games, LeBron James averaged 15 points, 8 and 8. He shot 2 for 12 from 3. He shot 4 of 10 from the free throw line. He averaged five turnovers a game for three straight games, which is beyond Jason turnover of the, the current <laughs> Boston Celtics. And LeBron wound up a minus 41 in those three games. Minus 41? Is that slander and vitriol, no. or is that just a fact? Yeah. It happened. So, so, so I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. LeBron James, the 19-year 19 19 career, had a bad playoff series. That's what it was. He, his finals, that's all time. I've never tried to excuse that. He played bad. He had a bad series. He picked he picked the worst time to have his worst get his worst playoff series. And it happened to be in the NBA Finals. There's no excusing that. There's no way around that. But you're telling me after a man's failure, he can never rise. So once you have a, 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 a bad series, you can never be 
anything you always because you always take it back to that. You don't look at the well, four I, championships. I take it back to the Celtics series in 2010, the last, the, the first go round with Cleveland. Look at his number, what he averaged. Okay, but look, go look at his numbers in the last three games. And why did his owner accuse him of quitting? Skip, uh, the owner accused him of quitting because he knew he was leaving. Mm. Of course, that same owner that accused him of, of quitting got on his air with private jet like a thief in the night mm. and went down to Fort Lauderdale to meet with him. Mm. That same owner. Now, why would you want? Why would you want to meet with a quitter? Mm. Why would you ever want to bring a quitter back to your team mm. if you? actually believe that to be true. Then 2014, LeBron's team, and he was the man in 2014, yes. got blown off the floor in the finals by a record finals margin Can we in look five at games. It? Go look at games three and four in his house and tell me what LeBron didn't do because he didn't do anything. It was shocking. He shrank and disappeared. That is not vitriol or slander. It's the truth. Skip, yeah. but are we going to talk about the Spurs had a historic shooting the ball from the three-point line? Okay. LeBron was LeBron just averaged 28, 7, and 6. I mean, 28, 7, and 6, uh, I mean, could they? That, those are not, have I seen him average more in a playoff series? Absolutely. Mm. But D Wade wasn't the same guy. You know that. I know that. Chris Bosch didn't have a great series that series. LeBron play, could uh, did, LeBron would have needed to average 35 in order to overcome the way the Spurs were playing. Hey, they didn't win. But Skip, you already know. You know it. You started this. It's all your fault. You started this. You started this harsh critique of criticism of LeBron James, and people have jumped on. No, you started it. No, you need no, okay. no, Just go back to uh, the old place. You started this at the old restaurant. You yeah. got a new restaurant over here, yeah. but you brought the same recipes. You just cook them up in a different, in a different batter. And you know what? He always lived down to what I was saying <laughs> no, again and again and again. He lived <laughs> down. And my bottom line is we're talking about Michael Jordan, the mentally toughest superstar I've ever been around, got to know him in Chicago, closely observed him, against LeBron, who's had moments of being the mentally weakest superstar I have how, ever witnessed. How mentally tough you got to, how, how mentally tough are you if you step away from the games twice? Mm. Well, the first one was four. I don't know that about the force. I'll yeah. let me say that. He stepped away twice. Mm -hmm. So how mentally tough? And my guy went to a bubble, went to Survivor Island, for a hundred days, yeah, and, and he, came out. He got. He was. His was the only team left standing in the mentally bubble. tough. Everybody then, right? else say fell it. apart. It's okay if you say no, mentally we're tough. Talking about on the basketball court, not in the bubble. On the court. Do you understand? Under fire on the court. I want you. Yeah, think in about the bubble. It. it was the classic game two against Denver, in which the play is called for LeBron and Rondo said after the game, see, "I locked you eyes see what you with did? LeBron." You see what you did? You see what you did? You see what you did? not move. I you thank you for bringing that again, up. Again, what you do? We saw him <laughs> with no clutch. G. Went he to wanted a no part of the last shot to against moment. Denver. Went you know again. it, and I know. Went to a moment. See, it's a fact. I showed you the video. I showed you the quote from Rondo saying, "I locked eyes. He did not move. I was forced to throw it to the wing." To AD, who rose and shone and made the shot that saved the series and the championship. Oh, saved the series. So yep. the game, so one oh, one. And one to one. Exactly. Yep. So that saved it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.